What is going on today everybody, it's Buddy here. And in this video, you guys are gonna learn how to bleed your brakes in your car, truck, or SUV all by yourself without any help from anybody. And this is also gonna work if you just wanna flush your brake fluid out and put new brake fluid in your vehicle. Now, like I said, this is gonna work for all make and model vehicles. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go under the hood and we're gonna locate our master cylinder. Now in the back right of the engine bay, we're gonna have our master cylinder right here. We're gonna have a reservoir right here that holds our brake fluid, and then we're gonna have our master cylinder right under. Now, as you guys can see, my brake fluid reservoir is super empty. I had to undo some lines to fix the rack and pinion down here. So anytime you undo any of your brake lines, you need to bleed your brakes because you will let air inside the brake lines. And any air inside the brake lines will mean your brakes do not work properly. Now a huge misconception I hear a lot of people say is you wanna bleed your first brake furthest from your master cylinder. So for example, they'll say since your master cylinder is in the front left of the car by the steering wheel, you'll wanna bleed the brake starting from the back right tire since it's the furthest from the master cylinder. And then since the back left is the second furthest, you'll bleed that brake second. And the third furthest from the master cylinder is the front right, so you'll bleed that third. And since the front left is the closest to the master cylinder, you'll bleed that last. But that's not always the case. Before the 1980s, this was the standard because they didn't have something called anti-lock brake modules or ABS modules in their vehicles. Now, most cars past the year 2000 do have ABS modules with some exceptions like some early Mazda Miata models and some Corvettes and some other early 2000 model cars. But most cars since the year 2000 will have an ABS module that comes standard. So to locate your vehicle's ABS module, we're gonna come right in here to the master cylinder and we're gonna find our brake lines coming out of the master cylinder. Now we're gonna follow those brake lines and see where they go. And they come all the way through to right here into our ABS module. So these are the two lines coming from our master cylinder to our ABS module. And these are the four lines going to each brake caliper. Now, if you track your master cylinder brake lines just like I did, and it seems that they go to all four tires, that means that you do not have an ABS module in your vehicle. And that way, you can bleed your brakes from the furthest tire to the master cylinder all the way to the closest tire to the master cylinder. So as you guys can see here, our ABS module is on the other side of the engine bay from the master cylinder. So we're gonna have a different bleeding order on this specific vehicle. So since the ABS module is on the front right of the car, the bleeding order is going to be started at the back left since that is the furthest from the ABS module. And then we're gonna do the back right since that's the second furthest, and then the front left, and then finally the front right, closest to the ABS module. And the reason the Honda is like this is because it's a Japanese car. In Japan, they have the steering wheel on the right side of the car, so they just leave the ABS module on the right side for American imports. And as you can see here, there is a huge difference between the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. So don't really trust those YouTube mechanics. Well, unless it's me, of course. So now we know the bleeding order of our vehicle. We're going to go ahead and start in making our one-man bleeder tool. So the first thing you're going to need is an empty plastic bottle, whether it's a water bottle or a soda bottle. You're going to need your brake fluid, of course, a 3 16th line, a drill with a 3 8 drill bit, and also an 11 64th drill bit. So we're going to start by taking our drill and our water bottle, and we're going to drill right off to the side. You'll want to do it right in the middle, a little bit off to the side. And then with that, we're going to take our hose here, and we're going to shove it in there and we're gonna stick it all the way to the bottom of the bottle. Now we're gonna take our plastic bottle with our smaller drill bit, and we're gonna drill a little vent hole to the side. So now we're gonna take the cap off this water bottle, and we're gonna fill it up with brake fluid. Now we only need the bottom of the hose to be submerged within the brake fluid, so we're only gonna fill it up to about right here. So now we got our one man brake bleed tool. We're gonna to go ahead and bleed the brakes starting on the back left tire, just like we talked about. So now what we're gonna do is remove our tire to bleed the brakes, of course. So what I'm gonna do is crack the lug nuts loose with the breaker bar while the tire is still on the ground. Now after we broke all the lug nuts loose with our breaker bar, we're gonna go ahead and jack this wheel off the ground. And always be sure to throw a jack stand under the lift point for additional safety. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the wheel the rest of the way. 
So zooming in on here on our brake caliper, we're going to locate our bleeder valve, which is going to be covered by this little piece of rubber here. So we're going to yank this up, and that's going to expose our bleeder valve. Now taking our one-man bleeder tool, we're going to go ahead and slide it over the bleeder valve. And for a little added security, it wouldn't hurt to put a zip tie to secure it. So now that we got this thing all set up, how it works is when we pump the brakes, the old brake fluid and the air is going to travel through this line into this brake fluid that we filled up in the bottom of the water bottle. Now anything it does suck up, it's just going to suck up this fresh brake fluid, so it's not going to suck up any new air. And that's how you're able to bleed your brakes by yourself without any help. Now before you just start pumping your brakes, you're going to want to go back under your hood and locate your master cylinder. And we're going to go ahead and fill it up with brake fluid. Now first we're going to stuff a rag under this because anything brake fluid touches, it'll eat away. Brake fluid is super corrosive, so you got to be careful with the stuff. So we're going to pop the cap off. And we're going to start filling it up with brake fluid. Now the cap is vented, so it doesn't really matter if you leave the cap on or off. And now we're going to go ahead and crack our bleeder valve open. Now with our master cylinder filled up, our one-man brake bleeder in place, it's time to start pumping the brakes. Now when using this method, there's no specific way to really do it. You just want to make sure you are pushing the brake pedal all the way to the floorboard and holding it for about a half a second. Then come back up for another half a second and press the brake pedal back all the way down to the floorboard. Now at first, it may feel squishy when you're pumping, but that's just excess air getting forced out of the lines. A few pumps later, it should stiffen up a bit. Now also, before you get all brake pump happy, you want to make sure you or someone that's with you is keeping a close eye on the master cylinder. If you pump the brakes to the point that the reservoir goes empty, then you'll just pump new air into the brake lines and you'll have to restart the process. So be sure every 10 to 15 pumps, you go and check the master cylinder that you're not sucking in new air down the lines. And you'll notice that after pumping for a little bit, that all of the yellowish brake fluid with the little bubbles inside of it turns into a nice white clear brake fluid. And also sometimes when you get all the yellow fluid out and all you got is that nice white clear fluid, you might have little air bubbles coming out of your bleeder valve. Just leave it open, let all the air bubbles bleed out before you close off the valve. So line number one is all done, it's time to pull it out. Wipe everything dry. Again, you don't want this brake fluid getting on anything because it will rust it out. We're going to ensure that our bleeder valve screw is all the way tightened. And then we're going to put our little rubber cap on our bleeder valve. So now we got our first brake line done. Let's knock out the second. And it looks like the second furthest from the ABS module is going to be the back right. So we'll knock that one out now. So we're going to start by cracking our lug nuts loose with the breaker bar while the wheel's still on the ground. Then once the lug nuts are broken loose, we're going to go ahead and jack the tire off the ground. We're going to put our jack stand in place for additional safety. And then we're going to remove the lug nut screws with our drill. We're going to pull the tire off and move it out of the way. Then we're going to locate our bleeder valve on our brake caliper. We're going to remove the rubber tip and attach our one-man brake bleeder tool. And it's going to be the exact same process here on the right wheel as it was on the left. And be sure to keep an eye on your master cylinder while you're pumping the brakes to make sure it doesn't dry out and suck any air in. So now that we got these back two brakes done, it's time to knock out the front ones. It's going to be the same process here on the left side and the same process here on the right side. So when your bottle finally fills up, don't just dump this in your yard or the trash can. Because not only is it illegal in some states, but it's not environmentally friendly. So be sure to just dump the old stuff here in your brake fluid container and then you can dispose of this in any automotive shop. They'll take it right in and they'll throw it away for you properly. And that is it guys. That's how you bleed your brakes in your car, truck, or SUV. And if you're not a subscriber, you definitely should because you should know that I am the largest YouTuber in terms of flipping cars. And for my subscribers, I got this present for you guys. Just picked up this Toyota Highlander. We're going to be making a video on how to flip this and make some money soon. And if you haven't subscribed, let me show you guys a quick sample of one of my flip videos. What is going on today, everybody? It's Buddy here. Today, I'm going to show you guys how I took this super ugly, neglected, beat up looking BMW and turned it into thousands of dollars of profit. So I'm mainly a DIY channel, but I have started a segment on how to flip cars. It's what I do for a living full time. So if you want to learn how to get potentially profitable vehicles at low prices, how to fix them up and flip them, make a whole lot of money on the back end, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'm going to show you guys the entire process of how I made a few thousand dollars off this BMW from how much I knew I should buy it for, how much I knew I could sell it for, how much money I had to put into it, and ultimately how much profit I made off this. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video.